right guys welcome to lesson two of module one for the beginners the forex for beginners course let's get started right away so first we have the risk disclaimer as usual All right, so in this webinar, I'm going to discuss why you need to learn concepts and how to do it. And then I'm going to briefly go over how MT4 works and what it is. Then I'm going to talk about my approach to support resistance, candlesticks, ranges, trend lines, and supply and demand. So take out your notebook and take a lot of notes because this is going to be filled with information. First of all, why do you need to learn concepts and how to do it? So in the last webinar, we already spoke a bit about this topic, but it's important to create your own strategy. Um, there are a lot of ways to make money in the markets, like I said earlier, but it all comes down to creating a strategy that fits with your lifestyle and your personality. And the only way to do that is to learn different concepts and basically to explore what's, what's out there because you got systematic traders, discretionary traders, someone trades supply and demand, someone trades a false breakout of a range. There are so many ways to do it. So it's important to basically learn a lot of concepts and then stick with the ones that you understand to create your own strategy. Uh, and you do that by basically taking notes. So for example, if you have one year to learn a lot of concepts, maybe focus uh, every single month on one concept and learn as much as you can and then at the end of the month evaluate did you like it did you understand it go through your notes uh, and if you liked it keep it and and go to the next one explore another concept and basically at the end of the year you have explored a lot of concepts and you know what you like you know what you don't like you know what you understand and then you can really build a strategy and that you fully understand and that's important because otherwise you're not going to follow the strategy and you're going to make it to, to lose some money. So that's very important. And also take notes during these classes here on YouTube, because otherwise you won't be able to get the most value out of it. So that's why you need to learn concepts. That's how you can do it. So the first thing I want to talk about is MT4 uh, as a complete beginner. Uh, MT4 is a platform that you can use to trade. You can basically connect your broker to MT4 uh, and you can trade through MT4. A lot of people use uh, MT4. You can also use TradingView. I don't do that by myself, but this is MT4. So there are a lot of options on MT4. This is a blank account. As you can see, there's nothing on it. I use Pepperstone as my broker for the data because I like Pepperstone data, uh, but I do trade through another broker right now. So basically with this button, you can see your balance and your equity, um, uh, your exposure, history, uh, uh, signals, etc. There's a lot you can see here. Uh, these are all the currency pairs. You can add them via this button uh, for every broker this looks a bit different but this is the bottom line there you can add the instruments if you click here on symbols i know it's uh it's dutch right now but this would say symbols then you can look to all the symbols your broker offers and you can basically double click on it to show it in the list or not uh, then you can have certain profiles you want to use um, charting um, I don't really use it myself. I don't think it's necessary. This shows the, um, data, so the data. So for example, if I hover over a candle, you can see the time of the candle, the opening, the close, etc. These are tools to highlight something, to measure something. These are used for drawing. This is your FIP retracement which you can also customize by clicking on the settings. So you can really customize a lot. This is to put in some text. 
again, I briefly want to go over this because it's best if you just download NT4 and just practice yourself because it's not really that hard. But this is the time frames. Here you can take different indicators to put on the chart. You can also download custom indicators, put them in the folder, which is the MQL4. You go to indicators, put your indicator here, restart MT4. Same for expert advisor, and then you can just drag and drop on the chart. So that's how that works. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the basics of MT4. It's not really that hard. Here, if you want to trade, click on new order, fill in the details. Uh, this is a limit order. This is a market order. And you just click buy or sell. It's not really that complicated. Again, I, I don't want to go over the very, very basics like um, how MT4 works in depth. It's best if you just download it and try it for yourself. Another thing that is important for newbies is the position size calculator. There are some MT4 plugins, but um, I like to use this website, it's clean. I also use my effects book to build a track record. So basically you want to fill in your account size, which is a thousand currency, in my case euros, the pair. Let's say we're going to go long on GJ. Risk per trade, let's say it's 2%. Stop loss size in pips. So let's say I want to buy and put a stop below here. That's 157 pips because the last one is the pipette. Then you simply click on calculate. And as you can see, I need to put in a 0 0.016 lot, which will be round up to 0 0.02. And that's how you calculate your lot size based on um the stop loss and the risk you take so the stop loss size and the risk you take one thing i want to say here is every time you place a trade place the stop loss at the point at which you are wrong on a trade so don't um just place a stop loss because you want to get a for example if you sell here oh i want to get a 3r let's uh, make a tight stop loss no you want to put your stop loss at a place at where you were wrong so let's say i will be shorting this in my mind i was wrong if it took out that high maybe in your mind it's here but you want to have clear rules on when you are getting out of a trade and when you're wrong on a trade and that's very important that you want to uh, place your stop loss based on that so that's another thing i wanted to cover so position sizing again start on demo accounts practice calculating the lot size practice using mt4 maybe discover trading view if you like that it's totally up to you all right so the next thing is support and resistance and maybe you've heard of it maybe you don't but um, support and resistance is being used by a lot of traders. It sometimes is a line on the chart and it sometimes is a zone on the chart. Now let's go back to MT4. So the way I, let me get a clean chart. I use support, I don't really use support and resistance at all, but I used to. And the way I did it is I started at the higher time frames. I would mark out the most important levels. So let me first put in some lines to show you which levels to me are the most important on the weekly time frame. This one over here. Again, you don't want to go back and plot all the levels. You just want to put in the most important ones. So to me, these are the most important ones on the weekly. Basically, all the levels above market are resistance. So um, and when I say above market, I mean above the current price. So price is currently here, which means this, this, and this is a resistance level, and this is support. 
Um, and the premise behind it is that once price reaches a certain level that has been touched multiple times in the past, it becomes a, a level and you can trade off levels to target other levels. So the reason I put this one up here is because this is a very important swing point. I use these myself in my trading, but look at the move that came after the swing point was created. To me, it's very important. It seems like it's important to the market because they started to move. That's why I want to uh, put it in here. Same over here. They started this move. To me, this is an important swing point. That's why I put it in here. The next level is this one. Why? Because I look at the most recent price action and this is the last touch uh, on this level so I draw the line there as you can see there was a lot of touching over here uh, again not very precise here but also here so and also a bit here so that's the next level to me then this one is obvious two touches here two very important touches because this one created this upswing and if you look to the left you have this touching over here again sometimes it's a clear level sometimes it's a zone next level is drawn here this is the last bit of resistance in this level as you can see this was a touch this was a touch this was a touch here you got some touching here again again i put the most emphasis on the most recent touch and then i've drawn this support level because this created this move to the upside and that's how I start on the weekly time frame. Then I go down to the daily time frame, as this is my trading time frame. I maybe adjust some levels to touch the exact highs. As you can see, this level is used to be clear. So when the market was here, this level was valid. However, now it has been um, broken. So to me, this becomes the level. And also on the daily this becomes an important level to me. Um, this one is important. These two are still like they should be. And this one I will move up to here. So again, why here? This is a very important rejection because it took out the high and price moved down. This level is comprised of these two touches. This one, this one this and this over here so strong level uh, and the next one is comprised of this this zone over here some touches over here and the last touch which was here uh, this one is still these lows and this is this high and that major zone on the weekly so that's how i do it on the 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 daily time frame and basically it's all the same on every single time frame so let me first clear up the chart Again, one thing that's uh, pretty nice that I've seen multiple people do is, uh, for example, if they put in a daily level, they change the color to yellow. And when it's an hourly level, they change the color to blue. So you basically know if price goes to a certain level, uh, if it's a daily level, if it's an hourly level, etc. But for now, let's just put in the levels on the hourly time frame that are important. to me at least so on the hourly time frame these are the important levels again i want to put in the closest important level to the daily also this one will be clear on the hourly so why did i put in these levels first of all two equal highs means liquidity and a strong resistance this is another important swing point to the market uh, then this level with multiple touches and then of course this important swing low with uh, some touches over here then a break retest and the move down so that's basically how you draw these levels again sometimes these are zones sometimes levels um, now the next question becomes how can you trade these levels so the way i used to do it is simple i would use 
the swing points. So for example, this is a swing point. I would use them for false breaks. So let me remove the other levels. Let's make it a bit clear. So last time we spoke a bit about liquidity uh, and that liquidity gathers below swing points or ranges. So this is an important swing point to the market. And what I want to see is I know down these swing points. I do this on the daily time frame as I am a swing trader. Um, and basically what I want to see is a false break of this low. So I'd like to see a move down and then either a sharp move up or consolidation below and then like that. That's why I highlight the swing points. Now, the other levels I use are the breaks and retests. So this is a clear level and how I would play those is wait for a move to the downside, enter a short at the retest and then target the next level, which would be this one to get out of the trade. And potentially if the trade continues, re-enter at the level. So that's how a lot of people trade. So breaks and retests. You get a base forming, you get a resistance forming, you get a breakout of the range. Retest, you enter and you go for the next move to the upside. So that's how you draw levels and how you can use them again. I use them on the daily time frame to identify biases like the one I spoke about in the liquidity webinar, like um, like this one. So this was a important swing point on daily to me uh, during that time and we got a false break. So the, this gave me a bias to go short, like I explained in the last webinar. So that's basically support and resistance again. Some people might use it differently, but this is how you can use it and you can experiment with it, draw levels on your chart, see uh, how price reacts to the levels and build a strategy around that. So the next thing I want to cover is candlesticks. And candlesticks are basically the most well-known indicator. I call it an indicator, but it's just price and time. Um, so candlesticks are based on the high, the open, um, the close and low. And it's all based on time. So like I said, this is the daily time frame. So each candle is one particular day. Now, as you can imagine, this is the high of the day. This is the low, so the wick. Sometimes price closes or opens, like here, price opens at the low. But if you have a bullish candle, um, this is the high, this is the low. This is the close, so the upper part of the uh, body of the candle. And this is the open. For selling, it's the exact opposite. The high is still this and the low is still this, but the open is here and the close is here. Why? Um, price closed down, uh, gave a red candle, which means from the open to the close, price moved down. Therefore, this is the open, and this is the close. So this is a daily candle and the same thing happens on every single time frame and it's all about price and time so what did price do during this hour um, and this hour and this hour and you can use price and time to basically to trade with so this candlesticks i use certain candlesticks as biases on the daily time frame like this one again and then i basically trade on the lower time frame so again, experiment with candlesticks. There are a lot of candlesticks out there, like engulfing, hammers, shooting stars, etc. <clears throat> it's up to you to decide what you like, what you understand, because there are some stories behind these candlesticks. I don't want to be explaining everything because I think the best way to learn is to test things yourself and go over them yourself. So again, after this video, just go to Google, uh, search for candlesticks patterns, learn how, what they look like, why they occur, and basically take notes. And that's how you can learn. All right. 
next point ranges accumulation distribution and liquidity so liquidity i've already covered in the last video for a bit but ranges is important you have to know that on in general the forex market ranges very very often look at this this is well you could say this is a clear trend to me it's a range look at this range <clears throat> it took years to get out of on this time frame so the market ranges a lot and how do you want to use ranges what can you do with ranges basically i use ranges on the daily time frame to establish um, let me first get a clear example to establish what supply or demand uh, which one is dominant so let's take a look over here this is a clear 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 range and what you want to do is what i do at least is i mark out for example this is another range i mark out the high end during the formation of the range so this is the high end of the range in this case then i wait and I, first this was the low end then this became the low end and by now once price is here you know that there's a range forming then what i want to see based on the liquidity i spoke about earlier is i want to see what happens once one side of the, the range breaks <clears throat> And as you can see that happens over here but what's also important is look at this strong rejection so to me buy side liquidity got triggered used for a sell and i basically want to see what happens once the other side of the range breaks and that's what happens over here first the false breakout then move back in the range but then this clear close through the range and that's important to me so you basically got this false break break of the entire structure and that's when i want to be short you can basically trade the retest which i don't as you can see it didn't happen over here or you can just enter on the breakout go short and that's how i use these ranges so i want to see a false break of one side and then a clean break on the other side to potentially trade same thing here clear range this is the most important swing low got a false break so you got some up and down movement false break then a clean break above the range that's where my entry is my target is based on other things but this is how i play these range ranges again this is another it's a bit of a falling range but basically you can draw the upper boundary and the lower one then this becomes the important high clean break above entry and your stop placement is all up to you it's all about testing to me my stop would be here this is where i would be wrong on a trade on this exact trade my stop would be here again it looks good in hindsight but that's how i trade so that's basically ranges and again draw the boundaries and try to play breakouts or retests look what supply demand liquidity is doing inside these ranges to form a story so to me in this case buyers are trapped uh, hence the selling and that's why i want to be selling in this case um I mean sellers are trapped in this case in this case buyers are trapped and that's why i want to be buying so that's basically ranges again go over charts look see if you can identify ranges see if you can identify false breakouts of ranges um, our example here range as you can see this is the range low support level false break then it close above the upside of the range and price moves further here is another example i think it just broke the low but it's again got a range this is the high end of the range false break of the low clean break above long target to the upside place your stop loss wherever you want what works for you what fits with you 
and that's how I play these ranges again. And it doesn't always work, but it's a really nice concept to use in your trading. So trend lines is the next thing a lot of people use. I don't use them myself, but uh, some people would argue that this would be a trend line again to me. Uh, you can call these dynamic support and resistance, but trend lines are basically drawn to uh, establish a trend and establish a change in trend. So if you draw a trend line, for example, like this, let's zoom a bit in to make it clearer. You, the way I used to use these, don't do them anymore. I would basically start at the origin of the trend. To me, that's the origin. Then I would draw it. Let me explain why it's the origin, because this is the start of this entire up move. This is an entire range. This is the false breakout. So that's the, the starting point of the up move. I draw the trend line, go for the obvious touches that are most to the outside so the trend line starts here but then becomes this and that's also why i don't use them because you can draw it a lot of different ways and to me it's a, too much discretion but i still want to explain it because first you have this and then once the trend line breaks people will be shorting but as you can see this is a mass massive massive uptrend so that's why i don't really use it but if they are very clear on the daily time frame you can use them and as you can see, here you got the trend line break and a retest, followed by a strong move to the downside. So it can be used, but it takes a lot of practice. And the only way I would use it is to make it clearer in which trend we are, but I don't use it to trade. So trend lines are just a dynamic form of support and resistance. So the next thing is supply and demand and supply and demand is uh, being used a lot. I know a lot of traders that use it and some people call it order blocks or I don't know what else people call it, but it's just supply and demand. And it basically means uh, it's, it's, it's almost the same as support and resistance, but not quite. So this is a strong demand. So on the daily time frame, and why is this? because this is the last bit of ranging you got on the lower time frames before the move to the upside. The last important part, look at this. This is also a demand zone. This is the last bit of ranging before the massive move to the upside. And basically the last bits, so the last uh, orders are placed during this range so there is some accumulation during this range for long orders and then the price breaks out and the premise is that once price goes back there will still be buy orders here to go long and push the price up again and that's what happened over here so that's demand demand is levels below market um, I call these the last uh, touch before the breakout, the last touch pre-breakout. Again, people call it demand. Uh, the only thing that's important to know about demand is that you want a clean demand. Um, and you want it at the origin of a strong move. So to me, this is the origin of the strong move in terms of demand, of course. And the origin lies here. This is the low end of the range, but at the breakout point of the range this is the last high the last bit of demand the last bit of ranging before this strong move and it's the same here you got the range you got this is the original origin but this is the last bit of demand of ranging just before the breakout and that's important when drawing demand supply and demand another thing that's important so the first thing is you want to draw it at the origin of a of a a price move the next thing is you want violent moves you don't want small moves from away from demand look at this look how violent this move is this this is clearly very strong demand coming in here demand basically means bias by the way um, it's, there's a demand for euros versus the dollar 
which is a lot of buying, which pushes the prices up. And it's the same thing here. Look at the aggression of the move followed by the demand zone that got created. And that's really important one, uh, once you're going to identify this. Again, got a range here to me. This is the last bit of demand over here. And again, a strong move to the upside. Um, some people would also say this is supply. This is demand. I call these swing points and I use them in a way I described earlier, but you can also use this as supply and demand. I use it during trends. So to me, this is a level. This is the last bit of supply because this is the last bit of ranging action uh, before price went down. And you want to draw it at the, I draw it at least at the opposite candle. So the, the trend is down. This is the last bullish candle before the breakdown within the context of the range. And that's why it's a supply zone to me. And basically what people do once they draw this is, like I said, they want to enter on a retest for another move up. And um, they do this usually on the lower time frame. So let's say this is a daily demand zone. It's pretty big. And then people would go down to the hourly and look for entries into uh, the demand zone to get a better risk reward ratio. So that's basically how you can use demand. Again, just another concept, explore it, learn about it, Google it and see if you understand it because I just want to go briefly over certain concepts that I think are important for beginners. So let's go to the recap of today. So we basically spoke about why you need concepts in your trading, how you can practice concepts in your trading, a bit about MT4 and some uh, concepts that I think are important for traders. So let's go over them again. Briefly, you got the levels we spoke about basically starting at the higher time frame, going down to the lower, color coding the levels um, and use them as support resistance and swing points. Then we had some ranges, how I trade ranges. So by identifying ranges, the boundaries and looking for a false break and a clean break to trade. We got supply and demand. Uh, we talked a bit about liquidity, uh, about candlesticks and trend lines. So this is basically this series about concepts, again, explore yourself, uh, read, test things out, take notes, um, really take the time to master something because uh, it takes some time to really understand the concept and you can maybe read in a week about it, but that's not how you learn. You really want to take some time to learn a concept, to test it, see if you can spot it on a chart and just look how price rejects. Like here, price touch the demand zone. Here, we didn't have any touches here. If you would draw this as a demand, it broke. What happened after it broke, etc. Really go over it yourself. And that's basically important. As I said, I use swing points, a bit of demand, but I call it the last high before the breakout. And I use ranges as well. So now it's up to you to do some exploring um, take the time to learn about these concepts. And if you have any questions, you can either contact me via the website or just post a comment below. Also feedback would be nice because sometimes I can forget some things as I have been trading for so long, the beginning, the, the things beginners need to know are very common to me and I don't really think about it anymore. So that really, um, because of that, I can really forget some things when I'm explaining something. So if you have any feedback or questions, just leave a comment or contact me via the website. And I hope you guys learned a lot and I speak to you guys in the next video next week. So have a good day and bye-bye.